Hello, thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is Sarah. <sighs> so, <laughs> you guys know I'm in Cambodia. Um, it is hot. This heat is like no joke. So, let's get into today's. I'm going to start kind of doing a few topics about nursing since if you guys have been following me at all on any social media, Facebook, Instagram, or this channel for a while, you know that I have been a nurse for 15 years. I quit my bed, bedside nursing job last year to start traveling, and I've been actually working online as a remote nurse. So I'll talk about that in a different video, what I've been doing. Today, I actually want to talk about... I want to start kind of making this channel something that can help people because there are a lot of people like me, like a lot of nurses who are unsatisfied or who are just looking for other types of nursing jobs that aren't as like strenuous, that aren't as like toxic because when I was working in the hospital, it can be really toxic for you. And yeah, I was in, hospital, in the hospital almost my entire nursing career. But I would like have back pain, I would be like tired, I'd be stressed out a lot. And you know, I loved my patients, that's what kept me there for so long, and I usually love my coworkers. But I wanna start talking about jobs that you can do that are not hospital related jobs. So, and as you guys know, I usually only talk about things that I have personal experience in, and the types of nursing that I'm gonna cover are probably gonna be things that I've either looked into doing or being, or something that I know a lot more about. I don't like to talk about things that I'm not like super comfortable with, just, just, just how I am. Okay, so, <laughs> some of you have know me personally, prison nursing. So I wanna talk about being a prison nurse today. I actually, I know a lot of you are like, okay, yeah, so prisons have nurses. So maybe you don't know that prisons have nurses. Prisons have nurses, jails have nurses, any facility that has people incarcerated have nurses. So I was a prison nurse for about a year, nine months to a year, I can't quite remember. This was back when I used to live in Boston, uh, Massachusetts, and I needed a side gig. And prison nursing pays well when you're a new nurse. So I had been a nurse for maybe six months. And just a little background on me, I was actually a criminal justice major in college before I went into nursing school. I was a criminal justice major because I thought I wanted to go to law school. So that was kind of my trajectory. I was like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go get a job, I wanna go to law school, I wanna go to the FBI. Like, I had this whole other career path than what I chose. So all of you are kind of like, that's so weird. So anyways, I went to this talk. There's this lady named Candace DeLong. She used to be a pediatric nurse. She happened to come to my school I don't know why she was giving a talk on something and I went and she talked about so she in case you don't know who she is she actually helped catch the Unabomber in Montana way back in the day so you guys don't know how old I am so this is like way back and so she helped catch the Unabomber so she came to our to speak and I was like always into that I was like love like anything kind of weird mysterious creepy crazy like that that just I don't know interests me so I went to her talk and she was a pediatric nurse and I was like, oh my God. So during her speech, she talked about how she was a pediatric nurse. Then she went into correctional nursing and then she went into the FBI. And at that point, I was like, okay, I want to go to law school, but I also want to go into the FBI and I wanted to be like an undercover agent. And that's sort of like what she did, but she started off by being a nurse. So I was like, boom, that's it. I'm going to go be a nurse. I'm going to go into corrections because when you go into the FBI, I mean, I don't know anything about the FBI. I just know that they like you to have unique backgrounds. The chances of me getting in having a criminal justice background was probably going to be not as, you know, was going to be not as high. And plus when you get out with criminal justice major, I was like, what am I going to do with my life? So I was like, sure, why not? I can be a nurse. So there was like two, rehab, two, two ways I picked being a nurse. It was like there was no speech, no math. So I was like, okay. And then I heard her talk, and I actually went up to her at the end of her lecture, and I was like, so do you think I could get in the FBI if I go to the nursing group, blah, blah, blah. So I had this whole long conversation about her and her work.
working in the prison system. So as soon as I had six months in to my career, I saw this opportunity to make extra money out of prison and I instantly was like, oh my God, this is it. This is how I'm gonna go into the FBI. This is gonna be my like window. Plus it paid me, I show up, you make $100 extra just for showing up to work because prison nursing is, is hard. So I know I talk about not at bedside, just because you're not at bedside doesn't mean it's hard. It's not physically demanding, it's mentally demanding. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you through a day in my life as a correctional nurse when I was doing it. And I was doing it about three days a week. It was only part-time, but part-time eight hour shifts was like three days a week. And I only worked three days. My other jobs, I was working like six days. In case you don't know, follow me. I work, I'm like a workaholic. So, <laughs> I got the job. I wasn't surprised I got the job because a lot of people aren't really applying to be prison and it was at a maximum four or maximum sorry maximum, four, maximum level prison, male prison. So it up uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty okay with not letting people get under my skin, not getting bothered. So I was like, yeah, I can handle this. So when you first show up to work, you get like these little I used to have them with your last name, they're like little chits. So they give you them, they have like your last name, they had like Burdick on it, and I was like, oh, this is so cool. So when you get there, you have to hand in this, these little chits to prove that you are who you are, show them your ID, and then you walk through the first gate, you get in, then they search your things, so you have to make sure you don't have anything, because the prison I worked at happened to get, have, I mean, people have gotten killed at prisons who are staff members, like it's not an uncommon thing. So you walk through, you get your stuff checked, then you walk through another gate, someone else like pats you down, then you walk through like the yard, which no one's in it, but then you go into another gate. So you walk through a total of four gates, and they're each like huge, and they're like slam, and they're like, like what you see people do, like, Tow, 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 like that make crazy noise, and you're just like, holy crap. So then when I would enter into, into the prison, you are walking with inmates. And I would just like have my bag and I'm just like in my scrubs and I'm like, hi, hi. And it's just like you're going to work and then you go into the HSU, which is the, like the infirmary, like the hospital, I think it was like the hospital staff unit or something, but it was called the HSU. And you checked in with the guard who was there. So there's always a guard. And then you just, you do typical, typical nurse things you do. You see if there's any inmates in like the holding cells. So basically if an inmate gets sick, you call 911 and you get the inmate out of there. So we had like a little med area in case someone had like chest pain, we could do an EKG, we could do the basic stuff, but you called the, the paramedics and you sent the patient to the hospital. Um, or you had that room for intake, so when you had a new inmate coming in, you did like a question, just like have you have an admission to the hospital. Uh, typically there was two of us on, two nurses, one was the RN, so I was the RN, and then the other person would be like an LPN or maybe another RN, but there was usually only two nurses on duty at the time. And so I, being a nurse, and I was new, and I was young, you, so you do your NARC count, just like anywhere else. You have a med room, you have NARC counts, and you would do that. Then you start your shift, basically. Your shift started by doing med pass, just like any other shift in a hospital or nursing home or anywhere that you work, you do your med pass. You get your cart, you make sure you have everything. You have your pill crusher, you have your little packets, because you have to crush the meds, especially, well, you don't have to crush all of them, you have to crush the, um, controlled substances, like if they're on Adderall, they're on Ultram, they're on Tramadol, any narcotics, because it, inmates will, they will put it in their cheeks and they will save it for later and snort it or whatever, but it, it also, I'm, it's kind of hard because I'm like, yeah, they don't really have anything else to do, and let me tell you, these inmates, but if you're in prison or you've ever been in prison, they are genius, like, most people, if you have nothing to do but think, you're going to think of things. So they will think of stuff. So you just, I mean, but you just treat them like any other patient. So, but that was the one thing that I was like, oh God, because you have to like give them their meds and they have to go play up. You have to like look in their mouth if you gave them any controlled substance. So I would do that. But, so you had to have all your stuff ready. Then you go down. I was in like the DDU, like this, like, basically they're in the holding cell for 23 hours a day and they got one hour out. 30 minutes to go to the yard and maybe like 30 minutes to take a shower. So they were like basically the worst of the worst. And then on occasion I had to go to the other place which was like they were on lockdown 24 hours a day. So these were the worst ones. And most of the people in our prison were 
I mean, just because they're maximum security didn't mean that they were all in there for like horrible, horrible crimes. Some of them were in there just because they misbehaved at other prisons. And you're like, this dude's like 18 years old here for like car theft or something simple. So the inmates weren't, you know, they were, it was just like you go to work. You, you just go to work. You're like, hi, how are you? You just have a normal conversation. You always have a parole officer with you. So you always had, like, I either had one or two when I was walking down the unit. So I didn't ever feel endangered. I didn't feel, you know, there's, if you've ever worked taking care of them in the hospital, they're the same. They're sarcastic. They can be a pain in the ass. They can be really nice. But it is mentally draining because they are, they can be very manipulative. That's the thing about working in, it's even working in psych. Like, I'm not saying that they're doing it intentional, but when you have nothing to do or in all you think about is how you to get what you want you create ways in your head to get things and it's up to like us in the in the facility is just to go and do your job so i would just go be professional do my job and leave so i liked it because i don't know i like that population though i have always loved psych nursing i've always loved stuff that's a little bit unique a little bit different and yeah you could talk to them and I used to have to give um we had a handful that actually come into the unit before meals for insulin so I would check their blood sugar give them their insulin and like you can have like a little bit of a conversation with them and you know some of them were like just normal normal guys you forget when you're working there you kind of forget that you're working in a prison I mean you always have to be smart because anything can happen because they are criminals and they are there for reason and they there are is, is always like a parole officer there but they're still they're still in they're still locked up and obviously no one wants to be locked up um, but they've committed crime some of them may be innocent some might be guilty I don't know there's a lot of stuff going on with like people getting like DNA and stuff and sometimes I would take care of somebody and I was like there's no way he's here for what they say and sometimes you just feel that like you just I was like there's no way anyways different story but it's just it's just interesting how you forget like when you're a pro in a professional role such as being a nurse they're still your patient so you still do your best to take care of them we the shift I work we didn't have a doctor but if the doctor would visit I think once or twice a week and he would see the patients um, sometimes we'd have someone in lockdown mainly they'd be in lockdown if they came back from the hospital and they had something wrong so we just had to check on them make sure they were okay and then they went back to their um, their cell so, and then occasionally they would have, you would have people acting up. So this is when it got kind of scary for me. The last shift I worked, I had a really scary moment. So I decided to quit because some guy was like hacking up a cell and like he made a like weapon and he was like swinging it at people so you could like actually get hurt. Um, that didn't happen. Like I was there for nine months or a year. I can't remember. It, I only had that incident happen once, and I was kind of already on my way out because I was moving. I was switching jobs. I was moving out of Massachusetts, and I kind of had it. I was like, "Yeah, I'm done. This is cool." But <laughs> so it's a really unique. You have to be. I would say this. You have to have a really strong. You have to have your nursing judgment has to be really spot on because they will read books and they know exactly what to tell you and you have to treat every you have to treat it like like it says you have to treat everything professional you have to call the doctor you have to call the doctor if you have to call 911 you have to call 911 if they just and sometimes I would work with some nurses like oh they're just trying to get out of here I'm like yeah but you still have to treat it like they're having chest pain even if they're not and they come back in two days that's how it is you just have to be professional. Some of the nurses I would work with did get too close to the inmates and you could tell and they would take, like some of the officers, like they take forever to do med pass because they would have like, and it's true, people have relationships with people in prison, which you see this on TV and you're like, there's no way that's true, but some of these nurses, the way they would talk about the inmates, it was almost like, it was really weird. So, because they, they can be manipulative. I mean, people in general can be manipulative, but if you have nothing to do and you think that's what you're thinking about it can happen um but so a lot of them will make their homemade alcohol so it's amazing the things that they inmates can do they will make their homemade alcohol they will get drunk they will like cut themselves we have a lot of people cut up like just cut and then you have to take them to the infirmary and then you have to call the call 911 get them to the hospital and everything that you do is filmed because there were so many incidents of like inmates getting beat so now the state kind of protects them and that's a whether you agree with that or not I mean from a medical professional you still treat everybody 
the same. We don't judge them. We don't treat them differently because they're in prison. And, you know, a lot of people will not agree with that. But as healthcare professionals, that's what we are trained to do. And just as a human per a human being, you can't judge somebody. You have to, you have to like just do your job, be professional at it, in any any um, no matter what you do. So, so they would do that. So you'd be on camera, and you'd have to be like, do you need medical help? Do you need medical professional? Most of the time, they would be like, I don't need your help. I want the psychiatrist. They'd be like, yeah, like I want the psychiatrist. I don't want a nurse. I don't want a doctor. So you're like, then you're like medically cleared. So when you say they're medically cleared, I mean they need psych help, but they don't, they don't need you. So then you're kind of done and you can leave. I got pepper sprayed. I mean, I got it in my eyes. I used to go home with like my eyes red, swollen sometimes. It's because like you get caught in a crossfire. I didn't have everything on, and you have to get close to them, and they were sprayed. It was a crazy, crazy, crazy time of my life. Um, but I did like it. It was really interesting. I learned a lot about myself and I learned how to read people so much better. I learned to just like look at people, know what they want, their thinking, how they are, because you have to really trust your intuition. You really have to trust your gut. You have to have a really strong backbone. You have to be strong clinically as well to work in this environment. So if you're someone who's looking for a challenge or you're looking for something unique or just to see if you can do it. Like I would do, I think it's a great way for new nurses to kind of, cause I've been dealing with a lot of nurses lately who can't stand up for themselves. I mean, I, that was me. And then I went to work in a prison and after that I was like, damn, I can do anything. If I can work with someone who might be here for murdering like their entire family, you can like call a doctor and be like, hi doctor. Cause a lot of nurses, we have trouble calling doctors for things. I don't know why we're scared. I'm gonna do another video on that. But this, like, you just have to just be like, this is it, this is what I'm doing, and end the story, because you're in an environment, and you're you're caged in, too. I mean, you can't, and if we went on lockdown, you don't get out. Like, no one leaves. We went on lockdown a few times, and I was like, oh my god, I hope lockdown lets up, because I have to go to my other job in the morning. Like, sometimes I'd work till 11 p.m. I wouldn't get out till 1, because something would happen, and we'd be on lockdown. So you're on lockdown. So when you go into a prison, you have to realize, that yeah, you're not in prison, but if something happens, if there's lockdown, you are right there with them, you and all the correctional officers. Um, so yeah, it was quite an interesting experience for me. I think it's a very interesting part of nursing, especially if you like psych. Um, I obviously quit. I didn't go to the FBI, obviously, because I'm in Cambodia, I'm doing not really doing nursing now, but. It's a cool little, like, it's a cool little nursing niche that I think, and I've met other nurses who do, like, prison nursing and who do um, jail nursing, and they love it because it's a fun little, it's kind of like you can be yourself, you can be a smart ass, you can be this, you can almost just, you know, because the, the patients are inmates and they're going to joke around with you because they aren't technically sick, and... They're just, and you know, sometimes you're the only face they see from the outside world. So yeah, they're gonna be like, hey boss, how you doing, what are you doing? And like, that's how they'll talk. They'll be kind of like, what are you doing today? What did you do on your day off? And you're just kind of like, you're like, yeah, cool, I had a good day, what did you do? And like, you know, what did you do, what are you doing here? And you have fun. You know, you just like have a, like a, you get like a banter with them and then you get to know them. And so it's a different way of life. I mean, you don't have to go in there and just be like, oh, they're all criminals. I cannot have like, I, my life's gonna suck because I'm working with criminals or inmates. But that, but if you're a parole officer, maybe that's different for you because you have to control them. But as a nurse, you can have a little bit of more banter, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And yeah, they might, and you have to keep it in the back of your mind. They might be manipulating you to get get what you want. That's where you have to stand really strong and be like, no, I'm sorry. You know, I know you're saying this, but you already had a medication. You aren't due for another one because they'll try to like warm you up and butter you up. So that's why it's really good to like a really good character building career so I don't know recommend doing it yes I loved it I wouldn't do it for longer than a year or two years unless you're like cool it's not a big deal so the nurses I worked with they loved it they were there for years and years and some of the med passes were just at the window I had the more intense because I was new but sometimes they just come to the window get their meds and they leave they want nothing to do with you too and they're just like whatever why are you here why do you work here it, so you get like a whole spectrum of people, but as you guys know, I love people, I love talking, 
I survived, and I used to be the most timid, shy nurse ever, so I do credit working in a prison to helping me get out of my shell, like 100%, like trusting myself, learning to interact with difficult patients, because they are difficult, they can be fun, they can be crazy, they can be any color of the rainbow, and you're going to have that when you work in that type of environment. I hope this helped. <laughs> um, so, I, it's, it's hard to explain exactly what you do because in nursing, every day changes, but that's the basics. It's more of like a getting, you know, it's not, it's not really about the, your skill set, like putting in a Foley, putting an IV. It's more about a mental, it's your mental strength when it comes to working in a prison. So anyways, drop me a comment. Let me know if this helped. Um, if I can be more clear, I'm working on starting to have like a more clear and more clarity in my message. Um, I write stuff down, but it, I can't do both. I get distracted. So I just have to have it planned in my head. So let me know if what you guys think. Um, don't forget to subscribe, follow me on social media, send me a message, drop me a comment, I will always get back to you. And thank you so much for watching from hot, sweaty, loud Cambodia. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.